Здраво, здраво, како секогаш така и овој пат, каде е коне во музичката емисија Heart and Heavy, овој пат имаме нови соговорници, станува збор за титаните на трешот, кои не дајаат од Соединетите Американски држави, значи, оние кои го започнаја трешот, од Байера и сцената од Сан Франциско, тука по крај мене се, значи, господарот на гитарата, мастер оф да гитарс, Алекс Коули и Стив Де Джорджио. First to a welcome to the TV show. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah. Hello. Thanks. Thanks for welcome. Hi. Yeah. And for me, the big uh, uh, pride and pleasure to be for the big gigants of the Trash Titans. Tell me, you started just in, in the 1983, but they changed the name. First to be the legacy. Why do you change the name? Yeah, well... Um there's only one member from 1983 yeah. here. Um, yeah, the, the first re album came out. And, uh, Chuck Billy and I joined. Well, I joined in 1983. Um, uh, and we were co the band was called Legacy. Eric uh, Peterson had formed the band. And uh, there was another band called Legacy. But they had the rights to the name. They hotels. But we couldn't use the name. But you have the album, the name, the legacy. Yeah, that was sort of a tribute to how we were. But then we became Testament. You have many bands in one region, but now you're in a testament to many years. How to be together and you because you now the work in the new material I think so it's the finish it's coming to in October yeah mm -hmm. tell me for the new album the maybe yeah, I, I think the album turned out really well I think fans of Testament will really enjoy it very Testament there's no experimentation Would suit Testament fine, but at this stage, I think the, the it was just to make a point that old guys can still play fast and kick ass. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think it came out good, and I think the fans will really, really dig it. Ready for this album, and maybe the best I think so that feeling me. You be one time in sabotage. Your good stuff, your uh, uh, your soul, maybe it's the only who is the listen, the know the you are the plane. Your corporation not good. Well, yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're still friends. Um, you know, I both Steve and I have been in in band and out of band. Played with other bands as well. Uh, Sabotage was actually the first non-Testament uh, band that I played. Very different, very melodic. And very different, yeah. Your soul is very clean, emotion. Sabotage the beat of... Yeah. Well, I wanted to try something where it uh, was a very different type of thing. Uh, you know, they had piano. Yeah. Um, why, yeah, we're talking about how the New Testament album has no clean, ballad -y stuff. <laughs> that was a lot of clean ballad -y. Uh But, you know, it was nice to, to do that. Right um, ultimately, I didn't stick around because I felt like I, you know, I had other... Happy to have me, and I, I was honored to fill in for yeah, the great Chris Oliva. Uh, I think they needed somebody to 
they had this long-term plan. They were gonna do more records, and I just I had too much other stuff. You are very technical, the playing, but who like the lyrics of the new album? And we are taking inspiration for the new album. You're talking about the, uh, it's coming. the, the New Testament yeah. record. Yeah. The new lyrics? The new lyrics. Or Chuck. Mostly Chuck. Chuck. Most, mostly Chuck. Mostly Chuck, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Maybe Alex could actually answer that one a little better. I, I'm not well, really see, it's a little it's different. different. It's different every every time. I, I think this, this record, you know, Chuck's just really... Um, yeah, found his his voice in, in with the lyrics. Uh, sometimes in the past, um, with the rest of us, lyrics, or, he's had different writing partners. Um, and I think this, this game, most, most of it was, was written by Chuck. I will take it inspiration over here with the. Uh, you know, he, there's a song called Can of Business, which yeah. is about about uh, the legalization of legalization. Uh, cannabis. Yeah. Um, there's another one uh, uh, about gambling, of blackjack. Yeah, like a night in Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> kind of fun. A yeah, little bit of lighthearted yeah. fun stuff. Uh, some of the some of the inspiration of the lyrical content came from a light concept of uh, secret societies. Yeah. And um, yeah, different title. different example. You know, it's the, the, a loose theme. There's no concept in the album, but there's some songs that tie to this theme, and that's where the title uh, "Brotherhood of the Snake" came yeah. from. From an old kind of secret society thing. They talk about everything from. You know, Freemasons to Illuminati to Vatican, oh, like nice. any Super. any kind of yeah. you know society that operates clandestine and you know and things are found out later. It's kind of an interesting topic, and it, it makes for a good epic background in a way because there's a lot of history and, and you know imagery involved in it. But and then, like Alex was saying, some of the songs are just fun. You know, there's yeah, like cannabis business is about weed being legal, yeah. Different bands find what they're comfortable doing, and um, somehow with with Testament, yeah, we'll occasionally play a ballad, but it's pretty rare. I yeah. think, uh, especially to Chuck, he's he's. I think he likes to just kind of go full full on, like all cylinders. Uh, the whole she's got a lot of energy. Yeah. yeah. But then we yeah we'll do a song like uh, Dark Roots of Earth. Yeah. Which isn't a ballad, but it. Yeah, you know, it's a slower it's pace. And, heavy. Yeah. and Testament has a good ability to do that. Like they can go from balls out speed and, and brutal style to a nice moody and epic kind of thing. You know, that's that's the beauty and the talent of Testament to to be able to not just be one dimensional in the sound. You know, I think the fans dictate sometimes what they want to hear. You know, and 20 years ago, metal bands were just more melodic by nature and ballads would appear more often where now you go to you could these festivals are great examples i mean you're just hearing one brutal band after another and the fans kind of just really want that kind of aural onslaught you know so they, they kind of dictate it so when we come up with set lists like the idea to do kind of a ballady thing it's just not appealing anymore i guess you know well, you never know maybe it'll yeah. There's been talk about changing up the set, so yeah. maybe yeah, yeah because, find a way because to you have in. good emotion and you good okay. songs. The new order for me, it's the the sound that the not nice. Maybe uh, the, the recording the first album in the future, the change because the now the different oh, yeah. the well, studios and eight is the bit different. Yeah, the sound. it was very hard to record. Yeah. Uh, heavy music back then, and yeah. there wasn't really um, 
you know, the experience. There wasn't yeah. a template for it. Yeah. And now yeah. that sound is just, you know, studios had to learn how to the sound of the, get the, that sound. Yeah, and, yeah the know. equipment got better. You could yeah. actually buy an amplifier that yeah. had to sound close to that. But at one time, that was a very new sound. Yeah. And then later you had, you know, even bands like, that, you know, were very popular, like on the charts. Yeah. You know, in the 90s, yeah. with that same sound. It was yeah. maybe the songs were a little more, you know, more commercial. Commercial. Right? But they, they were selling so many records. Uh, you you had to, you know, be able to record that. Like every engineer had to know how to get a good sound. So now it's we can go to any studio and get a pretty good metal sound. I yeah. mean, obviously, yeah, we have our. The guy we, we work with, Andy Sneap, who's done the last few records, and we have chemistry with him. But uh, if we, you know, if we had to go to any like working studio, we could probably come up with a better sounding record than that yeah. <laughs> that one. <laughs> for me, for the best album, for the testament in the practice, what you breathe, a very technical, very. Um, what do you think? You know, so, uh, for the who is the a bad album of the testament? Everything is, is good, but what do you think? Who is the first of the first? You could ask you could ask ten different people their favorite Testament album, and you'll get ten different answers. Testament has like seasonal changes of their sound. You know, there's the classic old sound, then there's the middle where they really went to the dark side, and then they're coming out of that with a more technical thing, and then it seems like the later phase is more mature songwriting. It's it's very different. You can't compare the old stuff to the new stuff, which is, you know, it's it's a nice evolution to see within a band. It's they don't stay with one boring sound. They try different stuff. So yeah, I don't. You could have a favorite, you know, maybe in a certain era, but not a favorite overall because they're very different. Yeah, there's different periods in the band, yeah. too, depending on who's in the band at the time and what um, what mood the band yeah. is in at the, t at the time. Yeah, there's sort of the there was a death metal period. That yeah, there was um, yeah when the reunion. Period. Yeah, the re, the, you know, the resurrection. Sound, uh, the last couple of records, yeah. which is sort of a blend of different yeah. eras, and so yeah, it's it really depends. And yeah. People, yeah, you know, everybody's got a different favorite. Yeah. Who designing the uh, art of the new album? Uh? Um, I think it's the same same guy. I think we have uh, Eliron Cantor is his name. The, the same guy who the is the working guy. every. Yeah, he's kind of like designing. part of the team. Yeah. What do you be I think, in the art? I think that's, what, what, I think that's him. I'm not uh -huh. 100%, but as far as I know, yeah, it's, it's him. Maybe you know what it be? Uh, oh, what design? will it be? Uh -huh. Oh, um, I know it's, ba it's based on the title track, uh -huh. right? So it involves uh, snakes and mm -hmm. secret societies. But, uh, yeah. uh, it, it, you know, it'll be, I can't, I can't really describe it. Yeah. It's, a bit, it's a bit abstract. Yeah. Now, like Alex said, there's elements from the lyrics that appear in the art, but it's it's kind of a avant-garde style, you know, like yeah, like unrealistic for the for the sake of kind of an abstract. It's it's cool, but it's, it looks pretty mean. It's a, definitely a metal cover. It's got red and snakes, and it's fucking evil. <laughs> yeah, because the album it's finished. It's finished. Yeah, where they started the tour of the Testament. For the album? Yeah. Oh well, in for October. Promotion for the album. In October. 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 Yeah, I mean, we're still <laughs> we're still going to be doing tours throughout the summer. Yeah. But the official uh, touring for that record cycle starts yeah. in October with uh, Amon Amar in all over Europe. Yeah. Be in the Europe the tour. Uh, all over Europe. Like, yeah. oh, really. uh, thanks. And for the end, what they like to say for. Thanks for the attention. Thanks for letting us talk to you. Let us know what they think. Maybe we can get down there and get a show. I heard it's a beautiful country. Very beautiful. Yeah, it's great. Great that we have fans in Macedonia. Thank you for the support. Uh, there's some great music in Macedonia. I've got some yeah. gypsy albums from Macedonia. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, thank you, and we hope to see you very soon. Yeah. See you soon. Metal forever. Yeah, metal forever. Drive!
Legend! 